God bless each and every one of you. We welcome you to the program this evening. This is the Word of Power Gospel Hour, and I would like to thank the TV station for having us on here. It's a privilege to be able to preach the gospel, and we thank them for having us on here. And we welcome you tonight. And I pray if you've tuned in to this telecast that you would open your heart to receive and grab the Word of God is able to save the soul. And I also pray that the Lord would open your ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Can I hear an amen? Amen. have a very powerful message tonight. And uh, as I was fasting and praying, the Lord gave it to me out of spirit. Amen. amen. And I pray it touches people. I pray that the Lord would quicken your understanding today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That he would open the eyes of your understanding and that the Holy Spirit would quicken the word unto you. That you would understand what he's saying spiritually. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's pray, shall we? Father, I pray that the hearers, that your word goes forth and it has free course, that you would anoint it, Father. And I pray it would fall on open hearts today, Father God, to bring a harvest in their life, Father God. I pray the word will be quickened unto them, that they understand it. And not only understand it, Father, but apply it to their life. You said, be ye doers of the word, not just hearers being deceived. May we apply it to our lives, Father God, that we can walk pleasing unto you. And Father, we give you all the glory and praise. I pray, Father, that there's a spiritual awakening going on in this city of Louisville, Kentucky. Father, I pray that there's a spiritual outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this city, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for revival and evangelism, Father, in this city. Oh, Father, may your word be declared and go forth in power that you would anoint it. Let me speak as an oracle of the living God. And Father, we surely give you all the glory and we'll give you all the praise. And we thank you for everything you're about to do and going to do, Father. I pray many of uh, the harvest of souls would come forth in this city through the preaching of the word of God. Father, in the book of Acts, they said that your word was pre preached and, uh, and as you increased the word, the people increase, Father God, and such as many need to be saved was added on to the church daily. And I pray daily that people's added on as the word increases, that your harvest, the souls, will be increased in this city, Father God. And may we disciple them, Father. And we thank you for all things. I pray you move into churches in this city, Father God. And I pray for that harvest of souls, Father. And we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. I pray the Lord would meet your needs today. Can I hear an amen? Amen. We're not here to be show time. We're not here to be pretty. We're not here for show. I'm here for the Lord to speak as an oracle of the living God. Can I hear an amen? Amen. And I pray you open your heart today to receive the engrafted word of God is able to save the soul. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, if you hear the word of God and you don't apply it to your life and do what it says, it avails you nothing. The flesh profits nothing. It's the spirit that indeed is willing. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Then uh, we're rapidly approaching Easter here. You know, the two most important dates in history, the two most important dates on our calendar, as we know it, is Christmas and Easter. Jesus was born by the Holy Spirit, birthed by the Holy Spirit at Christmas. Amen. Through, through a virgin. Amen. As the Spirit of God overshadowed Mary. Jesus was born into this world for one purpose, and that was on Easter to die, to take our sins and carry them upon the cross. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. Jesus died that we could live. And it says in the book of Acts that we move and live and have our being in him. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. And you must be born again. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. And we as Christians, the most important dates is Christmas and Easter. Easter is when he died and bore our sins and was resurrected. Can I hear an amen? amen? That we can go to heaven. Amen. The name of this message today, oh, hallelujah, is no easy way out. No easy way out. There's no easy way out in God's kingdom. There was no easy way out for Jesus. Jesus was destined with a purpose, and that was to go to the cross and bear our sins and take our judgment that God would pour his mercy out on us and pour his grace out on us. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Jesus was birthed and born to die for you and I's sins and to put them away once and for all. 
Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The name of this message is No Easy Way Out. No quick fix. No instant answers in the kingdom of God. You know what it says in the book of Acts, through much tribulation we must go through to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Everybody wants it easy. They want to go down easy street and be blessed all the time. Can I hear an amen? amen? That's the flesh. The flesh always wants to sit in its comfort zone and to be pleased. You know the Bible says that we're, we're bought with a price. We're not our own anymore. So we need to do those things that please him. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. If you, everyone nowadays wants microwave miracles and answers, instant pudding, instant answers, if you will, that's not faith. In Luke 23, chapter 23, if you have a Bible, if you will turn to it with me, to, or write these scriptures down, you can turn to them later, just always write it down, and go back and study them for yourself. The Bible says study to show yourself and prove them to God, a workman that needs uh, not to do to divide the truth rightly. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. A, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, dividing the word of God. Rightly dividing the word of God. We need to rightly divide it. The word has divided us too much. Can I hear an amen? amen. We're divided. We're in division. The word should rightly divide us. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 23, verses 33, let's go over here. I'm going to bring you up to date. They just had went to the Garden of uh, Gethsemane, and they received Jesus. They took Jesus. They bound him and took him to Judge Mahal. Can I hear an amen? Amen. And over in verse 33, And when they came to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. Jesus was taken from the Garden. He was taken to Judge Mahal. Uh, he was taken before these people, just all these people, the high priest and all of them. They turned him over to, to the Roman people, and, and he wanted Pilate, Pilate wanted to turn him loose. But the people said, no, crucify him, crucify him. The Jews hated Jesus. I hate to say this, but the religious people hated Jesus because he came and he upset their order. Can I hear an amen? They were following Jesus and not them anymore. They was listening to Jesus and not them. They were still amen. living under the law. They were still binding people up under the law. Can I hear an amen? Amen. And Jesus came to set them free and to save them, that they could live by faith and be justified by faith. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Jesus is going to the cross now to die for every person in this world that has ever lived. He's going to the cross now to die for their sins. Amen. Now, they led him to a place called Galgotha, amen, which is a place of the skull, where the sin take place in our mind, in our skull. That's where it's conceived and birth and born. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, and when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, they crucified him. And the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And then in... Luke 23, verse 34. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Do you know I'm going to tell you something today? As a Christian, you have to forgive people. Jesus, I'm going to tell you something. This is very important. This is one of the most important things in your Christian walk. You have to forgive. Jesus, these people that beat him, took him, and nailed him to this cross, his prayer to God is, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Can I hear an amen? amen. You've got to forgive people. I'm going to tell you something. The most important thing in your Christian walk, staying plugged in with God and walking with the Lord, you've got to forgive everyone as he forgave. Can I hear an amen? He forgave them all. After they crucified him, they're killing him. They speared him. They did everything to him. They beat him. They spat upon him. They rejected him. The one that came to save them, they rejected. So we must forgive people. Amen? Amen. There's some of you out there God's dealing with right now. You're holding on against your brothers and your sisters. 
And listen, even when you're Christians, I'm going to tell you what, those people that sat with Jesus, all these apostles, he rebuked them too. He rebuked Peter. He told, he told Peter, he said, get behind me, Satan. You say we're those things to be a man. One minute of Peter's walking with Jesus, and, and he's telling him, Jesus said, who, who do men say that I am? He said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus is patting him on the back. And in the next minute, he's telling him he must go to the cross and die and be raised the third day. And Peter's rebuking him, oh, you can't do that. And he said, get behind me, Satan. Thou savest those things that be of God. Thou savest those things that be a man. So, you're having somebody walking with Jesus one minute this way and one minute that way. You got people out there right now that's walking with Jesus one minute they this way, one minute they that way. They're walking with Jesus, and then all of a sudden they're walking with the world, and they're walking with the worldly ways, and then the next minute they're walking with Jesus again. People, we got to get these unwavering walks right with God again. Can I hear an amen? Mm -hmm. I feel the Holy Ghost all up in this house. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place, and he's speaking. Those that have an ear, hear what the Lord, the, whoo, Jesus, the anointing just landed. The eagle has just landed. My God. Boy, you kind of fumble around in the flesh, and all of a sudden the anointing comes and you take off. Hallelujah. It's like a rocket ship taking off. <laughs> it's mighty power. Can I hear an amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I know some of you know what I'm talking about. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. One minute they're walking with Jesus, and the next minute they're not. They're walking like the world, thinking like the world, talking like the world. That's what Peter was doing here. Uh, uh, when I said one minute Jesus was patting him on the back because he knew who he was, and the next minute he's telling him he can't go fulfill God's plan. That was God's plan. It was incorporating God's plan from eternity past, from the foundations of the world and the earth. Can I hear an amen? Mm -hmm. This was all mapped out and planned out. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know how I got on that, but the Holy Ghost did. There's some of y'all that's thinking like the world. One minute you're thinking like Jesus, next minute you're thinking like the world. One minute you're walking with Jesus, next minute you're walking with the world. Next minute you're acting like Jesus, next minute you're acting like the world. Who's the God of this world? Satan. You're influenced by him. Peter was influenced by him. One minute he's thinking like Jesus, next minute he's influenced by the devil. Can I hear an amen? amen. People, we, we got to get rid of our unwavered walks with God. Can I hear an amen? amen? We need to start acting like Jesus and walking and talking like Jesus. Amen. Let's go down here. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment. Verse 35 in Luke 23. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them desired him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he be the Christ of the chosen God. They're saying, they're mocking him, ridiculing him. He saved all these other people. He did all these miracles for them. He healed them. He, he healed the blinded eyes. He opened the deaf ears. He raised the dead. Now can he save himself? Can he give himself a miracle? Jesus can take the easy way out now. Come on. He can take the easy way out, but he don't. Jesus knows he has to go through it. And he's got to finish it. There's some of you all, there's no easy way out. You got to go through it and you got to finish it. Amen. Like I said, it says over in Acts chapter 4, through much tribulation we must go through to enter into the kingdom of heaven. The Bible says we're tried in the fire. Can I hear an amen? amen. You got to go through your tests and your fires and your trials. Amen. Amen. Your, your tests and your trials shape you and form you to be more godlike. He's taking all that garbage and junk out of us. Can I hear an amen? And he's producing fruit in us. He's taking uprooting that bad fruit. The Bible says that every plant not by, planted by the Heavenly Father will be uprooted. Well, guess who planted those if it's not planted by the Heavenly Father? Mm -hmm. It's the devil, and he's got bad fruit. And God wants to get that bad fruit out of us and put some good fruit in us. Can I hear an amen? amen? John 15, 16, he said this. He says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. You don't choose today to come to the Lord. No one comes to the Father unless the Holy Spirit draws them. 
And when he draws you, I'm going to tell you something. You need to come to him because he may quit fooling with you and let you go your own way. And your ways are of destruction. Can I hear an amen? amen. The ways of the flesh and the world is death. Amen. Sin. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus came to take it on that cross. And I thank God he did it. He, he went through it. He went through it. You're going to go through it. I'm not going to stand here and lie to you and paint you a nice pretty picture. Sometimes it is a nice pretty picture painter, but sometimes it's an ugly picture. But you got to go through it. Jesus said, I need to go through Samaria. Jews didn't go through Samaria. Amen? Because why? Defiled people. So they thought. Gentiles and, and backslidden Jews. Amen? But you know what? He said, I must needs go through Samaria because I got to go through there to get where I got to go. See, some of you all got to get go through it to get where you got to go to get where you need to be. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost who speaks so plainly yes, that we can understand it. The entrance of that word giveth light mm -hmm. and it gives understanding to the simple. Yes. My God, we praise you today in the name of Jesus. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. It ain't time yet. It's not time to save himself yet. You know why it's not time to save himself? Because he's there to save you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. It's not time for him to save himself. Amen. Amen. He's there to save you and I. Hallelujah. Yes. It's not time. Hallelujah. Some of you all, it's not time for you to come out of your trials yet because you haven't been shaped and formed yet. Yes. You haven't had the character nature God developed in you yet. Uh, so you can't handle coming out of that because you can't handle things the way he wants you to handle them. Can I hear an amen? Amen. You got to hand on Christ-like. Amen. Hope I'm making sense to some of you. Hallelujah. And a superscription also in verse 38 was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And this king that came to save the Jews rejected him. That's why he went to the Gentiles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou, here we go, here we go, come on, this is exactly the point I want to show you here. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. I call that another message. I call that the devil's last temptation of Christ. If you be the Christ, prove yourself. Come on down. Get down off that cross. Uh-uh. Not so. Not today. Not today. Oh, I'm coming off. But I ain't coming off your way. You see, the flesh wants it done away. Hallelujah. Amen. The flesh wants the easy way out. He knows he's going to come off that cross. But he's coming off God's way. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. He ain't coming off man's way. Hallelujah. Because he's suffering. He's in pain. This man's suffering and in pain. And Jesus is not coming off that way. He's coming off God's way. And that's in the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's going to die and give up the ghost and come back in the spirit and go be seated at the right hand of the Father and become the son of the living God again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But the other answering rebuked him. So one guy on one side of the cross is rebuking the other guy who wants him to come down and save not only him but himself too. Jesus don't have to save himself. <laughs> he came to save you and I. He came to save him. And Jesus knows he don't have to come off that cross to save him. He's got to stay on the cross to save him. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Because he's going to die in the natural. He's going to die in the flesh. The man on the other both sides are going to die in the flesh. But he's dying to give up the ghost and go be seated at the right hand of the Father again. That he can send back the Holy Spirit. That he can save them and get in them. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But the other answer rebuked him saying, Does not thou fear God seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man had done nothing amiss. He's done nothing wrong. He's innocent. He's clean blood. He's pure blood. But we're guilty. Amen. The blood's on our hands. We're guilty. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into your kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Oh, that's a very powerful statement. In other words, this man is saying, I'm here because of what I did. I'm full of sin. And I deserve to be here. And I'm here because of the rotten deeds I did. In other words, what I have sown, I am reaping. And I understand it and I know it. But in, on the other hand, he's saying to Jesus, Lord, I'm a sinful man. But this one thing I ask, I'm here justly. You're, you're on this cross unjustly. You're an innocent man. I'm a, I'm a guilty man. You're an innocent man. And you are here, and you're innocent. And he said, Lord, where you, where, where you go, can I go with you? That man wanted to be with Jesus. Do you want to be with Jesus? The other man on the other side of the cross, let me tell you about him. He's just into self. The Bible says, pick up your cross and deny self. He just wants the easy way out. Do you want the easy way out today? Through much tribulation we must go through to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen, amen, amen. Think it not strange about the fiery trial that is to try you. And I'm going to tell you something. It says when you're going through your trials and tri tribulations to rejoice and count it all joy. Amen. For if you do, the spirit of glory rests upon you. No suffering, no glory. No trials, no glory. If you're persecuted for righteousness' sake, know that the spirit of glory, all glory, rests upon you. No suffering, no trials, no glory. Amen? Amen. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was dark, and the veil of temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands, I commend thy spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. My God, my God, and my Lord, he just gave his life for us. You see, the one man wanted the easy way out. That's what I'm talking about. The flesh wants the easy way out. Too many of us want the easy way out. Can I hear an amen? amen. you got to go through your trials and your tribulations. Through your trials and tribulations shape you and form you. To do what? He's emptying all the carnality out of us. He's emptying all the worldly ways out of us. And he's filling us up with him. When we're going through our trials and tribulations, just like Israel did in the wilderness, I'm going to tell you something. The reason Israel perished in the wilderness is because they would not cooperate with God. You know, uh, uh, Peter stood up one day and told the Sanhedrin, the Jewish religious people, he said, you always do resist the Holy Spirit. And that's the way people are today. Can I hear an amen? amen? They always resist the Holy Spirit. They resist cooperating with Him. They resist working with Him. They resist Him. And I'm going to tell you, in the book of Titus, it says the work of regeneration, the work of regeneration was the Holy Spirit that was sent back to change you and I, to be more like God. The Holy Spirit was sent back on, on the day of Pentecost, amen, to abide within us and to change us. To change us what? 
to change our sinful ways and develop yes. fruit, holy fruit within us, to change us back into the image and the character and the likeness of Almighty God. Yes. Can I hear an amen? Amen. There's no easy way out, people. There's no easy way out. You got to go through what you got to go through. If Jesus had, Jesus went through it, and He finished it. Whatever test and trial you're in today, just know that God's with you. He'll bring you through. If you will cooperate with Him and, and you, uh, you, you will yield to Him and submit to Him, let Him do what He needs to do in you so you can get out of your trial. Israel resisted and they had to stay in the wilderness another extra 40 years. Stop bucking God and staying in your trials and tribulations longer than you need to. Just cooperate. Let Him change you and do what He needs to do. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. There's no easy way out. There's no microwave answers. Can I hear an amen? amen? Many people, let me read you here. Too many of God's people want what God has or what he can do for them, but they don't want God. That man on that cross wanted what Jesus could do for him, but he didn't want Jesus. You got to make up your mind that you want Jesus and you want to walk yes. with him. Can I hear an amen? Amen. If you missed it and you messed up and you keep going in the same fires and you keep going in the same tribulations and you never get out of them, let your trials make you better, not bitter. Can I hear an amen? Amen. I want to pray for you today. Can I hear an amen? Amen. I'm, a, I'm not going to paint you a pretty rose picture because there's not. It wasn't a pretty picture with Jesus hanging on a cross with his side all open where they stabbed him with a spear. And, and, and the nail holes and the blood and the thorns in his head. Can I hear an amen? It wasn't a pretty picture, but Jesus went through it for you and I. The, the thing about it, even if we go through it, God's with us and he's going to bring us through it. We don't have to die. Can I hear an amen? Jesus amen. had to die. He had to go through it and finish yes. it and die. We're still alive. The fires and trials you go through, you're still alive. Can I hear an amen? amen. Because of him, he'll bring you through. I want to pray for you, Father. I pray right now that people got something out of this message and they would yield to what the Holy Spirit is trying to do in their life and, and that you would have your perfect purpose and plan and will in their lives. If you don't know Jesus today, I, will, I ask you to invite him into your life. You may be going through harder situations, but I, he can bring you through and he'll always bring you yes. through. Amen. And he'll save your soul. If you don't know Jesus, say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for my sins. You're the Son of God, and you was resurrected and raised from the dead on the third day. And if I confess you with my mouth and believe in my heart that you're the Son of God, you died for my sins, and you was resurrected, I shall be saved. If you said that prayer, say, Jesus, come to my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. In the name of Jesus. If you said that, you just got saved. You just got born again. You're on your way to heaven. Find you a church. Let the Holy Spirit put you in a church. The Bible says that it's the Spirit that places you in the body of Christ. Sit under a shepherd, a shepherd in a, in a sheepfold where God has called you, and you will mature and you will grow. Can I hear an amen? Amen. I pray you got something out of this. There's no easy way out, people. Just go Jesus' way. Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. Go his way. Can I hear an amen? Amen. We love you, and we'll see you next program. God bless you.